right. And today is the very first day of a long 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. You often hear us talk about the cone of concern showing potential paths for storms. So now there are potential changes to uh, how the cone is developed and you might have a say, a say in its design. Mark Collins is here to explain. So Mark, what's this yeah. all about? Well, actually, there's some research going into maybe changing the type of cone to provide more information. So how well do you actually understand the cone and what does it tell you? Well, this is the most popular graphic issued by the National Hurricane Center. And the cone is actually not an exact path that this red line shows, but an average error over the past five years. And as you go out in time, the cone gets wider because forecasting farther out in time typically brings greater errors in that. But because forecasts have gotten a little bit better, the cone has actually contracted. Over the next 36 hours, it's actually shrunk by 6%. But as you can see, further out in time, it's actually grown a little bit wider over the past five years. So let's test your knowledge on this. The cone, well, the hurricanes, they typically stay within it about 60 to 70% of the time. So that that means as the cone gets a little bit narrower, the storms are still getting bigger and you can have impacts outside the cone. So that's the first caveat to using the cone. So let's take this test, true or false. The cone tells you about the storm size false. In fact, you could have a very compact system like a tropical depression or you could have a big storm. The cone tells nothing about the size. What about the hazards? Well, false. It doesn't tell you about any of the potential impacts that the storm could bring. But what about the overall confidence? Some storms are easier to forecast than others. It doesn't say anything about that. So there's some changes being considered. Instead of that red line, just take that out because that confuses people into thinking that the storm is going to stay right on that edge. Instead, use a maybe use a gradation there. Also, another proposed change would be using an ensemble model forecast known as the spaghetti models. Well, when you look at the tightly clustered lines, that usually gives you better confidence that the storm is going to move there or using categorical impacts as to when the storm makes landfall, where would be the greatest impacts for danger or destruction? That's another consideration. What do you think about this? Well, you can actually uh, voice your opinions and take a survey. And if you go to newsforjacks.com, that survey might actually earn you 15 bucks in an Amazon gift card. Florida State researchers are seeking your opinion, so you can sign up at newsforjacks.com.